Ah, okay. All right. Uh, so just to give a rundown of what we're going to be doing. Oh my God, there's so many cameras up. <laughs> uh, uh, I mostly do the show with a prompter, so without something telling me what to do and say, I got really freaked out. Uh, but that's not stopping you from filming, I see, so I'll deal with it. Okay, film if you like. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today, uh, we'll have a Q&A where you can ask me questions. I may or may not answer them. Uh, I'll be honest. Then uh, there will be a super fan contest where I, I will ask you the questions and you will answer me with the answers to the questions I've asked and then you can win a prize. Then we're going to have a chance to do, uh, well we want to take a group photo with everyone. Then we're also going to do a mannequin challenge. Does everyone here know what the mannequin challenge is? I see some heads shaking. Does anyone want to volunteer to answer what the mannequin challenge is? I can demonstrate that. I can demonstrate. All right. That's it. The mannequin challenge is it's this thing that's been happening on social media where like there'll be video of a bunch of people like standing in a position, not moving, hence a mannequin challenge. We have something in mind for it. It'll be very, very entertaining when we get to that. So I hope you'll all stick around for that. Um, if you are uh, staying here, just know that this means you could be videoed, uh, recorded, and banned from entering from China forever. Uh, <laughs> that, that laughter means consent, so <laughs> we can begin. Oh, we have to do this properly. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> Let's welcome our host, Chris, Chris Chappell! <laughs> yeah. All right. So, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is this is awesome to be back in Hong Kong. You know, we were here two years ago for the Umbrella Movement. Uh, I've got my tent. I'm ready to go back to the highway to camp out for a while. Uh, you guys can join me if you like. Uh, I think it should be safe. And um, yeah, it's it's been amazing watching what's happened in Hong Kong over the past couple of years. Uh, It'll be, so I'm excited to get a chance to talk to you all and see what your thoughts or feelings were. Uh, I'm just curious, what's the farthest anyone has come to be here today? Who's got it? If you have Hong Kong, Shenzhen, anyone else from further? Singapore. Singapore, all oh, right. Oh. Oh. Ooh, Urumqi. Huh? Urumqi. Oh, Urumqi, all right. Yes. Oh. Florida, oh yeah. All the way to Florida just to be here. Florida. <laughs> we'll edit that together. Oh, Sydney, Australia. This is a very international crowd. Uh, that just intimidates me, even. All right, so let's begin with a question and answer. So, yeah, just uh, ask me anything you like, and I'll do my best to answer. The floor is open to you. Also, you can ask Shelly questions, the wonderful Shelly. How many people are actually here? to see Shelly, not. Uh-oh, but for both of both... <laughs> Please leave. <laughs> oh, great, okay, so, yeah. Just raise your hand. How long was the boat ride, in fact? It was 56 hours. <laughs> 57 hours? Yeah, Kelly did two hours over there. In case, oh so, on. so in case you missed it, uh, we did an episode where we went to the Scarborough Shoal on a Filipino fishing boat. That trip, that single episode took 56 hours there and back. Uh, we were told it was only going to be a 19 hour trek. Actually, I was told, so the, the real story, so I was, I've been working on this for months, yeah. but we didn't decide to do it until we got the money from our Patreon supporters. Thank you, by the way. Which, thank you, anyone who's a supporter. Thank you. Um, we, I was coordinating this with 
the Philippine Daily Inquirer, which is the biggest newspaper in the Philippines, they were interested to cover our trip, so they sent three people to come with us. When I arranged it on the phone with them, he's like, no problem, it's 12 hours. <laughs> and then I thought it was 12 hours round trip. <laughs> and then a week before, it was like, oh, 12 hours each way. And then three days before, he said, oh, sorry, it's 19 hours each way. And then we get on the boat, which left three hours late. And then, because of that engine trouble, that's not a good sign. And then we're, we're on the water thinking it's 19 hours. And it's dawn the next day, and we're like, okay, we're ready to get to the, the shoal. And the captain's like, oh, you know, we stopped the engine overnight because it was, you know, rough weather, so we'll be there this evening. <laughs> we, we got lucky and made it before, uh, before dusk, basically, on that, on that day. And let me tell you, being out on the open ocean in a very tiny fishing boat is, uh, how would you describe that, Shelly? Really, really fun. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially at night when the waves the are waves were higher than the ceiling. They were higher than the ceiling. Yeah. Splashing us in the face as we try to sleep. Yeah, you kind of wake up kind of because like water had splashed on your face. Yeah. And it's yeah. great because you know you're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is... This is what I suffer for you, the fans. No, don't applaud. No, no. 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 Uh, once you go up, uh, just one of the shops they have in the Philippines. They, I don't think they care too much about intellectual property theft. The best clothes, though, you didn't see it on the episode. Matt had one that had. It had written Batman next to the Superman logo. Okay. <laughs> so, did you keep that? Only in the photo. Only in the photo. We donated uh, all the stuff to the fishing crew. I don't think they knew what to do with it. <laughs> uh, all right, so next question. Raise your hand. Okay, yes. What got you into China? Like, what's your story? Like, what caught your attention? Uh, I mean, I'd always been uh, interested in China. Um, from an early age, and uh, you know, I was born to uncensor things. <laughs> and you know, when I was growing up, I figured, what, what, what is the thing that has the most uncensoring to be done? Uh, and obviously, the answer was uh, U.S. politics, but no, I wasn't going to do that. So uh, China politics was was the answer. Uh, no, I've, I've always been very interested in Chinese history and Chinese culture. And everything that happens in China impacts the rest of the world. You might know that if you live in Hong Kong. Yes. Hong Kong is definitely, well, Hong Kong is also a part of China. I don't spread any subversive, hostile, foreign force kind of propaganda. <laughs> but, yeah, it's an important country. People should know about it. I used to work as a China journalist, and I found that people were not really getting interested or passionate about China. And I decided that if I, with a show like China Uncensored, I could speak my mind a bit more and also sort of use the humor to get people a little more interested. And I can just say, as a China journalist, I never had a room full of people photographing me and asking my questions. That's only happened because of China Uncensored. The real story is when Chris was a China journalist, Nobody believed anything he said because he was too sarcastic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is, that's, thank you, Shelley. Actually, one of the early pilots of China Uncensored, I tried to not be sarcastic. It really did not work well. <laughs> I'll post that someday. All right, more questions. Have you ever been to or intended in the future to go to China? Maybe do some higher level coverage? I've been to China all the time. I'm in Hong Kong right now. I was, I was just in Taiwan. And then I was at the Scarborough Shoal. Well within the nine days. So I've had a wonderful time in China this whole trip. Is there a reason why you picked those two places? Why it shows these big places? Uh, well, the South China Sea is been a huge topic we've been covering over the past year, so the idea to actually go there and see it and see how it's affected the people there was just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Uh, Taiwan, I really like Taiwanese food, and I figured I could maybe do an episode there about something important. Uh, and then Hong Kong, I love Hong Kong, you know, my first trip outside of the studio really was to come to Hong Kong to pour on the umbrella movement, so I, we've all been very excited to come back. This was the 
first team we had when we did that, uh, we, it, it blew my mind that we had the opportunity to come to Hong Kong in the first place. Uh, that trip was organized in three days. Um, so, yeah, I mean, who would pass up a chance to come to Hong Kong? It's, it's great. I think we've all been saying it's one of our favorite cities in the world. Yes. Uh, have you got any like backlash from organizations or individuals, even the government, from any for certain videos you've made? Uh, people across the board love me. Okay. Uh, and well, we honestly we have had some problems because of the content of the show. Uh, we were working with a suit sponsor once, uh, who had suddenly canceled on that on us. I had a friend who happened to be in the office of that company the day they canceled and they said that like two people from like a Chinese state-owned company came by. So that was a weird coincidence. We've also had cases where we were looking for a researcher for the show at one point and a fan of the show uh, you know, offered to work for us. He was a great candidate, loved the show, but he also likes to go to China a lot and we told him, you know, if you do this, if you actually get, if you work for the show, it might make it difficult for you to get back into China. Like after some thought, he was like, "Sorry, I think I will pass." So, and then just in general, all the ways the Chinese Communist Party can control media overseas through visas, through advertising. Uh, there's a lot of challenges for anyone who wants to report truthfully on China. Uh, so, I that's why I had to do uh, silly China news shows on YouTube where. <laughs> They can't shut me down unless they were to block YouTube in China. <laughs> How could they do that? Shelly, are we blocked in China? Um, no. Obviously not. If we're in Hong Kong. And people watch. All right. Any ne next question? Yes. What is your most favorite thing in Hong Kong? Uh, crispy pork belly. That's my favorite thing in Hong Kong. Uh, <laughs> Uh, why did you have her money? So, when we first came to Hong Kong two years ago, McDonald's had this amazing taro pie. And we've been talking about that taro pie ever since. One of the reasons we came here was for the taro pie. <laughs> we go to McDonald's, and they only have like a chocolate pie. <laughs> they don't have the taro pie anymore. This was... Yeah, we're really sad. We are, we, we are actually really sad. Have any of you actually seen Taro Pie in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, it's purple. Yeah, yeah no, no, like, like in the last couple of weeks? Yeah. Shenzhen, we have. Oh, we're Shenzhen. Shenzhen. <laughs> <laughs> Shenzhen, All right, we need a three-day entry. Three three right? All right, let's get this on camera. I'm totally changing my opinion about Chinese food. Let's go. Yeah, I'm not going to be surprised. Shenzhen, 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 Shenzhen
<laughs> what are you talking about? The Communist Party has a National People's Congress where the Communist Party is just one of many parties. It's a multi-party democracy ruled by the uh, dictatorship of the people. I'm, I'm going over what I remember from the Chinese Constitution. It has a constitution. How can China be any more democratic than um, this? You know, a lot of people have talked about democracy in China. It's the example of Taiwan and Hong Kong is proof that it is a workable model in mainland China. Um, I was reading an interesting book by a South Korean uh, author who was arguing that China doesn't necessarily need a Western-style democracy. It could do a, what he coined the phrase, a Confucian-style democracy. Um, you'll have to read about that on your own. But there are many ways that democracy could be applied to China. I think it's definitely something possible. The main thing is China will be better off without the Communist Party. I think a lot of places in the world, particularly Hong Kong, will be much better off without the Communist Party. But fortunately, Xi Jinping is just grabbing so much power. I, I'm pretty <laughs> confident that someday he'll be uh, a presentator of China. Presentator. <laughs> yes. yes, I came up with that term. <laughs> Did I tell you? Yes. Uh, what are some of the future issues you imagine exploring on the show? On the show? Um, well, the episode I'm really looking forward to doing is the uh, fall of the Communist Party in China. That's unfortunately will also be my last episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hmm. It's really an odd business strategy I show where I'm working towards follow the Communist Party, but that would also get rid of my job. It's a bad decision. Um, so to seriously answer your question, um, there's lots of topics coming out of China. Uh, and everything with the South China Sea is interesting, the military buildup. I love talking about the internal political fighting inside of China. That's one of my favorite topics. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. I think this is going to be a pretty big year inside of China, so I don't think there'll be any short stories. Yeah, when I created the when I created the show four years ago, I, I, there was a moment where I was worried about would there be enough to talk about. And I've been making about three episodes a week for four years, so there's been no shortage of ideas. But, you know, if any of you ever have any ideas for the show, you're always welcome to email us at uh, ChinaUncensored at gmail.com. Uh, there's been a couple episodes that have been recommended by fans of the show, so we always appreciate uh, your ideas. All right, next question. Yes. I see you over there, but I follow you. Okay. I have a question about the uh, Chinese American media or Chinese language media in the U.S. Uh -huh. Because uh, you, you said they're affiliated with New Tang Dynasty. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know, did my just two questions. One, are they affiliated with some other political organizations, and number two, what do you see as the prognosis of Chinese American media or Chinese language media in the United States? Okay, well for the second question, uh, I'm probably not that well informed about the overall state of Chinese American media in the U.S. Um, uh, as for the first question, you know, uh, like China Censored uses uh, like the studio of uh, NTD television. Uh, uh, we also like share, like uh, we talk about talk to some of their people who have sources inside of China. Um, there isn't too much affiliation between China and Censored and this, that company. Uh, you know, I'm not really a spokesperson for NTD, so I don't, I don't know too much about the, I can't answer too much about the company itself. Uh, you know, I know it was founded by Chinese expats living in the U.S. who were activists. There were some who were uh, survivors of the Tiananmen Square Massacre. And there just needed to be a Chinese language media that was not directly controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. And the Chinese Communist Party is very good at uh, soft power propaganda. Uh, it's amazing how many Chinese language media they are either directly behind or influence around the world. So it's very difficult to get uh, Chinese language independent uh, free news. Uh, so, you know, I really admire that they're, that that's the mission they're trying to do. Uh, I saw you had your question up, uh, your hand up. 
been to North Korea, and I have. I had a wonderful time in North Korea. No one shot at me. I, nobody uh, gave me any propaganda. It was totally different from what you might hear in the media. I had a wonderful time in North Korea. Uh, have you all actually seen that episode where I went to North Korea? Oh, yes. Yeah, um, yeah that was an interesting trip. Uh, you know, going to the uh, demilitarized zone between North and South Korea and going on to the military base, you get a sense of, you really get a sense of that that war did not end, uh, that it was just a ceasefire issue and that it's very tense. When you're, when you're driving a tour bus over a bridge that is surrounded by landmines, you kind of have a sense of just how tense the situation is. Um, uh, I've covered North Korea a bit on the show. Um, there's a lot of very interesting ways that uh, North, I mean, North Korea basically still exists because of support from the Communist Party. In particular, a lot of the efforts done by former Chinese leader Jiang Zemin. Uh, there's, we recently posted a photo of him hugging Kim Jong, Kim Jong Il. Uh, so the only reason that uh, the North Korean regime is propped up is because there's still, you know, trade and even. Uh, weapons being sold between the two countries. So, uh, fortunately, by doing China Uncensored, that gives me an opportunity to talk about North Korean issues as well, because it's very tied together. Uh, Want to ask for anyone who has not asked a question yet? Uh, all right, hold on. Sorry. Yeah. I'll ask you the biggest lesson you've learned from the China Uncensored. Biggest lesson. Uh, biggest lesson. Um, there is a place in the world for funny China news. <laughs> um, what is the biggest lesson? That's you ponder that. That's uh, I mean, you can also be <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to think of a good answer for that. Let me come back to that. Thank you. All right. Uh, you both have your answer. My question is about, about the, the profile. What, do, do, are you aware of what, what the profile is of your viewers by country and by by age and by uh, background and that kind of thing? Okay, Matt, Matt knows more about that. Um, yeah, so 40% of our viewers are in the U.S. and about 25% are in Asia, scattered across, um, that's not including South Asia, 40%. 25% in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, uh, a lot of viewers in Vietnam and the Philippines. Um, and then we have, uh, let's see, it's about 15% or so in Canada and about 10% in the UK. It's like unusually high in Canada. I think it's because it's colder. They don't have anything to do besides watch YouTube. <laughs> um, and uh, it's, it's um, primarily male, uh, upper middle class income. Yeah. Is it a lot of overseas Chinese? It's definitely more uh, Asian than the, like for the U.S. audience, it yeah. skews a little bit Asian, but not by very much. Like it actually is pretty representative of the local population. We did a survey um, back in April. That's why I know this data. Um, so we need all of you to tell everyone in Hong Kong to watch the show. I assume everyone here knows everyone in Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> I want a hundred percent viewership in Hong Kong. <laughs> yes. Would you, if that's the case, would you consider sort of covering like you know incidents in Hong Kong? For example, like let's say the uh, the oath taking controversy. I know you did an episode on the the, uh, the legislative council election as well one time. Well, that's why we're in Hong Kong. We're going to be covering a lot of Hong Kong issues. We just flew in yesterday. Uh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but uh, we've got some interesting things lined up in the next couple of days. We're going to be here. Uh, as I was saying earlier, I, I want everyone to join me in starting like a good old-fashioned riot. Uh, <laughs> so I want something to cover. 
Matt doesn't like that idea. He considers it would be bad for the image of the show if we were inciting rebellion. Uh, so turn on that off now. Kevin, uh, if you want to take a break, we will maybe have questions for me or Shelly. Does anyone have questions? Does, does anyone have questions for Shelly or for me? Mine's sort of split one to one to one. Yeah. Um, so there's two, two quick questions. One, are you going to go to the other SAR while you're here? Because oh. nobody talks about Macau, but... What's Macau? It's, it's a discussion <laughs> we've had. Um, but uh, we are we are looking into it. Okay. It's, not, it's not guaranteed. Okay. And we're not going to tell you what day it is, so you don't tell <laughs> like, Is there you know, something in Macau specifically that you want to see us cover? Well, just the contrast between their sort of development as an SAR versus Hong Kong because uh, like Xi Jinping has visited Macau I think twice and they always will say like look they're a well-behaved you know they're 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 running things smoothly you know Hong Kong could learn from them you know they always try to yeah it's an Asian yeah yeah and then the the, um, the other question is you mentioned about um, viewers in China how how much would you know or estimate people are watching through VPNs in mainland specifically? Well, we do have viewers in China who email us. Okay. Uh, we do uh, have some survey data where people voluntarily reported that they were in China. But we have no way to, to track it officially, yeah. nor would we want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why, Matt? <laughs> uh, other questions? Yeah. So the channel, you know, the Christmas of soft power and the encroachment of Chinese soft power in many of the arenas of the world economically in, in the media. Do you ever feel like you're just eventually going to get drowned out in that, or would you be the lone beacon in the island of democracy in the sea of red? Or what are your what are your opinions as a channel? What do you think it's? I mean, I am a shining beacon to the world. <laughs> <laughs> everyone to the righteous path, right? <laughs> yeah, next, next question. Well, okay. Do you want to say? No, go ahead, Sean. Um, so, it is a challenge sometimes. Like, one of the biggest challenges we have is, like, we actually try to approach the issues with some nuance, but I think that gets lost uh, because, like, there's always a fight going on in our comment section, especially yeah, with, like, people who are like, you're always anti China, whatever. Uh, and one of the one of the difficulties we have is like um, like interviewing people or like getting people like to willing to be on the show because like they are if they're like an established China expert they're often concerned that like you know like being on our show will affect their ability to like go to China or do business in China or like that kind of thing where it's like you know like. We are primarily a comedy show, but we actually do like cover some serious issues. But um, like, we're we're not really that radical, but <laughs> like we appear to be like like there's just like there's kind of like the safe place to be where a lot of like media covering China wants to be, and then we're kind of over here, and so we're seen as a bit more. Yeah, uh, I'll give some context. Like uh, when the Philippines was under the dictatorship of Marcos, all of the overseas Filipino media were really anti-Marcos. They were anti-dictatorship, and like that was just seen as like, of course you would be, and you're outside the Philippines, so you're free to say what you want. But with Chinese media, it's kind of weird because the Communist Party is so bent on uh, influencing, whether it's through money or politics. Um, or even blackmail controlling these different media. So uh, the o most of the overseas Chinese media, with maybe the exception of New Tang Dynasty and Epic Times newspaper, uh, are basically heavily influenced by uh, the Communist Party. There are a few other exceptions as well, but there's not that many. And I was speaking to um, the former Asia producer of one of the big three US networks, and he was telling me, it's like, you know, we make this compromise so we keep our bureau in China, but there's certain things we're just not going to touch. Like, sorry, not with a 10-foot pole, because we don't want to lose our entire bureau in China, because we'll lose all of our access in China. So it's not that China Uncensored is actually very radical. It's just there's so few 
Western media willing to report accurately uh, for fear of losing their China access or losing advertising dollars. There's so few uh, overseas media willing to report accurately that it makes us appear extreme, when in fact, it's actually quite normal to do like honest, truthful reporting about stuff. Why is that labeled extreme? I mean, and there are examples like Alicia Chan, who is a reporter for Alice Nero. Her visa was denied after she reported on black jails uh, in Beijing a few years ago, and she actually, because she was the only Al Jazeera reporter in China, that meant that Al Jazeera lost their entire bureau in China. Um, uh, like a while back, like there was like a scandal a few years ago with like Bloomberg uh, killing a story by their reporter Mike Forsyth, who was it was about. Um, I think it was Wen Jiabao. I can't remember exactly which Chinese official it was. It was like talking about his family fortunes, but like the story kept getting killed because, or like they kept delaying it because they didn't want to like affect Bloomberg wanted to sell like their terminals inside China, so they didn't want that to affect their business. Um, you know, there was a uh, Chris Buckley, a reporter from the New York Times, who had his visa denied. He'd been in China for uh, like more than ten years, and like suddenly his visa. His uh, reporter visa was denied, so he had to come to Hong Kong. So, like, there are a lot of these like examples in the last like four years or so, where like there's definitely been a media clampdown, and a lot of the like established like CNN, like New York Times, Wall Street Journal, like they are very conservative. So as a follow-on, do you think inherently that this is a lost cause? Do you think your reporting is really just the last stand of, of independent news of China? I mean, given you do independent, like one of the few independent sources of news of China. Well, it's certain, certainly difficult uh, to, for example, finance a show like China Censored. It's been able to exist because it's been on social media where uh, you can be free to kind of say what you want, especially about China. Um, so it's been difficult that YouTube has sort of changed its uh, advertising policy. You know, the show has, for the longest time, was funded by YouTube ad revenue. But they have now introduced this policy where if you are controversial, they can demonetize a video. Um, do you want to yeah, that, that's hit us really hard. That episode where we went to the South China Sea, that one was demonetized oh, for, okay. for the first like five days. So we lost, even though we appealed it and finally got them to re-monetize it, we've already lost 80% of the revenue we'll ever make with that episode. And so that's YouTube sort of, they're not censoring, but they are censoring through where they put the ad dollars. So that's <laughs> terrible for the future of our show if we can't afford to do trips like this or afford to just pay like the very basic bills. But we do have support from Patreon supporters, which is individuals who you know contribute like a dollar per episode. Yeah. Same, same. <laughs> so um, like that's that's kind of how it works. And you know we're trying to find um, advertisers. It's really really hard because most of them they just don't want to touch us um, but we are hopefully going to have an advertiser start with us in the next uh, four weeks um, one that is brave enough to not be scared about China we're, you know we're up front with them too like yeah. we tell them what we are so they can make an important decision right so that's why 90% turn us down but like we gotta do we gotta <laughs> tell them right at the same time I, I don't see this as a last stand uh, if anything doing the show has made me Incredibly hopeful because of people like you who will show up to a China Censored fan meet up in Hong Kong. Just all over the world, there's people who are making themselves aware of what the Communist Party is doing and they're speaking up more and more. I mean, Hong Kong is the perfect example of that. Everything the students did two years ago and they keep doing, uh, you know, it's a sign that even though there's this establishment that is too afraid or unwilling to speak about these issues, people are still getting aware, becoming aware about it. And I think, like, paradoxically, as as the Communist Party keeps, like, trying to expand their soft power, as they do things like put a giant Xinhua billboard in the middle of Times Square, you know, like, or, like, buy up, like, Hollywood companies, you know, like, as that happens, more and more people are kind of becoming aware that, like, hey, they actually should pay attention to China, that there are things there that are going to affect their lives. So that's actually helping our show uh, in a lot of ways. Yeah, we're, we're
We have time for one more question and we have to do super fan. Uh, all right, okay. Uh, what do you think will happen to the ethnic minorities in China? If you recall USSR, you know, there were bloody riots in 1991. When the, when, what actually USSR did was they tried to set up uh, Russian ethnic enclaves in all of these stands and also Caucasus regions. China is also doing the same. So when China will break up, what would you think would happen to the Chinese uh, minorities in these regions? Will there be any, uh, will there be any riots like that happened in USSR, like during collapse? Well, uh, from what I read in uh, People's Daily, all the 56 minorities are in harmony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you're from Urumqi, right? What? You're from Xinjiang? No, no, I went there. Oh, you went there. Okay. Yes. Well, so everyone there's happy. Yeah. Right? No, no absolutely not. Developed Tibet. Tibet used to be under oppression from the Dalai Lama. Yes. And <laughs> it's been liberated. Liberated. Uh, liberated. Tibet has been liberated. But anyway, so I think you could say, look at how the ethnic minorities are treated now. Yes. Uh, and it's probably not going to get better. Well, what happened was, if you read a news, I think I read a news about a day ago. China just ordered the local Xinjiang authorities to seize passport from the local Uyghur minorities. So every Uyghur person has to surrender their passport to the police in Xinjiang. And this is a kind of a game that's going to get worse and worse. And I did not see the same thing happening in USSR. I mean, they were not that harsh on minorities trying to contact outside world with them. Um, but China, they, they're going a bit extreme. So what do you think exactly would happen? I mean, the thing to remember about China is it's not just the minorities, but it's every single person in China yes. that is being oppressed by the Chinese Communist Party. Yes. When the Communist Party breaks apart, I think there, there's going to be an excellent chance for China to, for the first time in modern history, actually come together as a nation. So I'm, I'm still hopeful. About the show, that's a good answer to your question about what I've learned. It's I've learned that there, there is still hope, and just people. The it sounds a little cliche, but honestly, I think at heart most people are good, and in the end, good will win out over evil. So that sounds like a good, good, answer. good end, a good answer, and a good end for the Q and A. So, yes. so let's talk about the uh, super fan. So. <coughs> You're all in luck. We have some fabulous prizes for any of you who might earn the title of being a super fan. We have a bunch of questions set up. I will ask those. Uh, please, just so everyone gets a chance, um, if you've already won something, don't ask any more questions, or don't, don't raise your hand. Uh, let me show you what we have for you. I'll show you the first one. So, we were a bit limited in what we could bring with us on the trip, but we have, how many of these do we have? We have uh, six. Okay, we have six China Uncensored branded USBs. Ooh. Ooh. Some of that, yeah. <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, it's just got the logo on there, that's not so good. But on the inside, we have all of the China Uncensored music, as Ooh. well as some very nice spyware. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it'll all go back to Beijing. So, install these in your computers. Anyone with. And then, we also have, I'll hold the top, we have this. Ooh. <laughs> this was drawn two years ago uh, when we were in Mong Kok for the Umbrella. Uh, in Mong Kok, it was the Umbrella Revolution. Uh, Dolly Way? Yeah, Dolly Huey, a uh, Hong Kong artist, drew this of me at the time. Uh, there, this is the limited run of this poster. There's only, was it 30? There were only 30 in existence. There's only 30 of these in existence. And it's signed, right. it's signed personally, not like printed on, actually signed by his truly. Great <laughs> chap. So, these are the prizes. Uh, basically, the way we'll do it is, if you get a question right, you can choose between the posters or the USBs. The other thing with the posters is you have to just take it as is. I don't have like a case for you because we didn't have the room in my suitcase. All right. So <laughs> there's three posters and six USBs, so there's nine. Uh, there will be nine winners today. I think they're all winners, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go to Matt for the prize. Just all right. tell me which one you want and I'll uh, bring it to you. Are you guys ready? 
Yep. I can't hear you. Yes. Uh, All right. Uh, What? Sorry, just a second. I need to reload this talk. What was the name of the Filipino fishing boat we were on? Uh, we want to ask some tough ones. Anyone? Keep Google. Google? No time to Google. <laughs> All right. The answer was the boat boy. All right. So, next one. What TV channel broadcast the video resolutely spread name of hostile force Chris Chappell? That's it. Right. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Which, which, which one would you like? Can I have the USB? The USB. Spyware. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. All right. What is the name of China's patriotic girl band? Yes. That's it. 56 followers. 56 happy minorities in China. USB? Okay. All right. This one. The U.S. lifted a 50 years arms embargo on which of China's neighbors? Yes. Vietnam. Correct. Vietnam. Woo. Which, which of these? I can bring it over. Which of these would you like? Oh, uh, I'll take the USB. Oh, wow. Easier to get into Shenzhen. <laughs> <laughs> The spectacular fall of this Chinese official marked the beginning of the end for the Jiang Zemin faction. Uh, Li Xiao, I think Li. Nope, no, no. Okay. Uh, Zhou Yongkang. No, sorry. Bo Xi Lai. Bo Xi Lai. Bo Xi Lai. Poster. All right, All right the, the first poster is gone. Only two of those left. All right. What is the name of the person leading Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign? Whoa. Yes. Yes, Wang Xishan. Whoa. Poster. One more poster left. All right. I'm going to ask a hard one. I don't think anyone's gotten this one right yet. What is the name of the restaurant that Shelly is planning to start? Can you call yourself super fans? Come on. Uh, Shelly's special? No. <laughs> Would you read it out, Shelley? Uh, it is Madame Ming's Oriental Emporium, Oriental Emporium and Opium Dan Restaurant. <laughs> 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 it was in the episode about the, what, this ninja? What do we call it? I want to be ninja. Oh, yeah, the ninja. racist song. I want to be ninja. Ah, so tasteful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is one of my personal favorites. Who is the furniture of law enforcement? The furniture of law enforcement. Going, going, gone. Uh, my favorite Chinese knockoff toy, Robert Cup. <laughs> uh, a Robo Cup. It was the furniture of law enforcement, according to the packaging. Here's a trick, trick, trick question. This. President of China has been called unbalanced by state-run media. Tsai Ing-wen. Bingo. Tsai Ing-wen. Ing Get it? Whoa. President of China. Uh, Ing USB. USB. Yeah. All right. I actually need a USB. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one you want the least because of all the malware. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Name one of the five hotspots for war with China. North Korea. Would that correct? Uh, you should have raised your hand, but uh, we'll uh, give it to you. Uh, okay. North Korea. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, you, USB, there's USB or poster? USB? USB. Yes. Still one poster left. We have one poster left, and after this, two more USBs. Thank you. All right. Name a Hollywood movie Ooh. that changed its plot to get into the Chinese well, army. And, and how it was changed. <laughs> oh, and how it was changed. Oh, uh, I saw your head go up first. Uh, no, I can't no. Yep, sorry. It changed yes. it. World War Z. World War Z, how was it changed? Uh, according to the novel, the virus that China. Uh, yes, boom, I'll accept that. Good job. Congratulations. Woo. Congratulations. How many of those do we even have left? Uh, I think, well, we, we gave them away in New York. Uh, we gave them to some patrons and here, oh, so we have maybe three left in New York. That's it. Yeah, we're not going to do another run of those posters, so they're limited edition. Um, so what, what you should do is find all the other people who have them and affirm them. <laughs> <laughs> the poster's not the people. Or whatever. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Right, we have two more, two more questions. Two more questions. Let's see. By the way, just so you guys feel important, we only brought the posters for Hong Kong. The, the fans in Manila and Taiwan, they did not have an opportunity to get those. Don't show it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anyone. Yep. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, that's a tricky one. Yeah, I was but we can't answer it twice. Right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, do it. All right. This is a question I would not be able to answer. Uh, so good luck. What was the name of the foreign spy who betrayed a young Chinese girl? In the comic published by the Public Security Bureau. Oh my god. <laughs> Robert Cobb. Gotta raise your hand for this. <laughs> Gotta raise your hand. Oh, it's a tough one. Are you talking about the poster? It was, and any guesses? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. David. Oh, sorry, <laughs> David. David was the answer. Um, <clears throat> Anybody here named David? No. Nope. <laughs> no David. All right, so everyone's. Oh. <laughs> well, we know who the uh, U.S. spy is. <laughs> what is the actual name of China's Gestapo, the extra legal group that goes after dissidents? Yes. The uh, the organization. Yes. Office 616? 616? The 610 office. Yeah, I'll give that to you. It's Office 616. 616. Sorry. Sorry. I thought it was 610 office. Sorry. 616 office. Sorry. He overruled me. I apologize. What classic of Chinese literature did I do a retelling of on one episode? Oh, I can't answer it twice. Okay. Yeah. 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 Anyone who's not answered before. There's only four classics of Chinese literature. 25% yeah. chance, yeah. True Journey to the West? Journey to the West. All right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I feel like that might have been a good job. What does the angel of Nanjing do? What does Ooh. the angel of Nanjing do? There you go. Oh. 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 Nice All right, let's have a big round of applause for everyone. So, should we do the group photo or the chat? <coughs> uh, let's, let's do the group photo here in front of this. And then uh, we, I'm going to move it 
up a little higher. And then and then we'll do the mannequin challenge, which we'll have to clear a little bit of the tables for. All right, all right. So, so we're gonna do a big group photo. Um, and we'll, I'll take the photo and then we'll, we'll also put it on Facebook for you guys. Uh, just in case you're wondering, those of you who are, who are in China, we haven't had any cases where uh, fans or people we've interviewed have had problems with the CCP authorities. I, we, who are you? I we, promise, we promise nothing, but just so you know, that hasn't happened so far. So far, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all, I mean, I, I'm not promising anything, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Um, however, if you do get arrested because of this show, we might want to interview you someday. So. <laughs> <laughs> it might be worth it. Just saying. All right, so let's uh, let's have everyone kind of line up in front of the poster, uh, and with a little help, if we could move 